Hi, Maker Campers. Are you ready to finish up this pachinko project? We sure are. First, we'll wrap up a few straggler construction tasks like attaching our ramp, launcher, tray, and plexiglass. Then we'll begin adding our gameplay elements like our ball return channels, our sensors, lights, buzzer, and an LCD screen. And then we'll wire everything up to an Arduino Uno. Be sure to check out the project step-by-step -step PDF for a full list of the supplies that you'll need. But before we finish things up, let's take a quick trip to the Make Media Lab where Matt Kelly will show us a couple of vintage pachinko machines that he's working hard to restore. Hey, this is Matt Kelly over at the Make Labs. Um, currently rebuilding a couple of pachinko machines, uh, making them look better, kind of bringing them up to date. This right here is a 1970s Sanyo pachinko machine. Um, a lot of these machines were sold in department stores in the 70s in America. Um, and this one is a little beat up. Balls are stored up here. And then as you see over here, this would be all the balls that you already have. And as you flip this switch, it'll shoot one up into the play field, go around. And the objective is to flip the switch at just the right velocity where the ball will fall into one of these jackpot holes or one of these lotus flowers. Um, and depending on which one you get it in, it can tell how many balls to pay out down here in the jackpot center. Um, so if we're looking over here at the flow, this is where all the balls are stored and they'll come down here and it'll be ready to pay out. And these simple mechanic switches here know when these chutes are full. Um, when a ball goes in the center lotus flower here, the chute will let go and will let off a certain amount of balls and they go out front down here into this jackpot center down here. Everything is simple mechanics on this guy, um, but it's actually rather sophisticated in how it knows where you are in the game and how much to pay out. The current project that we're working on is a 1976 Nishijin Con Less. Um, this is somewhat of a rare machine and has a little more electronics than a lot of them. So we needed to take it off, replace some motors. What we're trying to do with this machine is add more lights, add more sensors, um, so that it creates a more vibrant gaming experience. And we're also replacing a lot of these Lois flowers. Um, these are easily 3D printed parts, so we're gonna make this all make themed. Um, we're gonna have little makey robots instead of Lois flowers, instead of these wheels. Um, but we plan on keeping the Japanese aesthetic. All right, let's attach our ramp. We're gonna make this ramp out of balsa wood. Measure your ramp from the center of your scrap of wood to your trigger hole. This part takes a little bit of fine tuning, so make sure that once you have your ramp in place, you use some sandpaper to knock off the edges. You want your ramp to be very smooth all the way up to your hoop. Once you have it just right, glue it down. Now take your two pieces of your tray and mark the hole for your launcher. This is gonna vary a bit depending on how big your launcher is and how big your tray is. We've measured ours about two inches down. Glue your tray sides in place. Glue your bottom in place and glue your top in place. Now you have a finished tray. Now we're going to attach our launcher. This part also takes a little bit of fine tuning so make sure you fiddle with it enough to get your ball to launch pretty directly and pretty fast. Use your bolt, washer, and nut to attach your launcher. It doesn't have to be really tight, just the hand tight is fine. Cut the end of your launcher off and sand it. Now we're gonna make the wood pieces for our magnets. The magnets will hold the plexiglass in place. We did dars about three inches from the top and three inches from the bottom. We're putting two on each side. You'll notice that we drilled a hole in the plexiglass, but make sure your magnet doesn't get in the way of your hole. Glue your magnet to the top of your wood scrap, make three more, and then glue your wood and magnet pieces to the side of your pachinko board. To make it easier to line up the sets of magnets from your playing board to your piece of plexiglass, 
It's best to just stack the magnets on the playing board, add some glue to the top, and then put your plexiglass on it. Now we're gonna add the cover shelf to hide all of our electronics. The other part of the tray will hold our ball return. This is a pretty simple thing. You can make it out of scraps of wood. You essentially just wanna glue down some scraps inside of the tray and make your wood shelf mm, about eight inches or nine inches long. It just needs to be able to hold your Arduino and either your breadboard or perf board. We're using a little scrap of bamboo here. Let's first do a little tuning of the holes to make sure that when the ball drops in the pocket, it easily flows out of the pocket into the ball return. We'll use a 5 8 inch bit at an angle to open up our holes a bit. And now we're gonna drill our wire holes. We're drilling three into that little compartment that we just made. This should be plenty of space to pull all of our wires through. And now we're drilling our ball return hole. This is just basically a doubled up 5 8 inch hole. And now we're gonna sketch our ball channel lines down from each ball return hole down to the ramp. Before we actually make our ball channels, we're gonna glue a little piece of bass wood for our ramp at the bottom of the ball channel. You wanna do it at a slight incline. Once you have your ramp in place, it's time to do the plastic canvas channels. Cut a piece about two and a half, three inches wide, put some hot glue down, and hold it in place. Make sure you leave enough of an arch in your plastic canvas for the ball to flow freely down to the ramp. After you get your ball channels in place, it's time to do the main ball channel basket at the bottom on top of the wooden ramp. All the balls will fall down into this, roll down the ramp, and back into the return hole. Here's a glimpse of our code that we wrote to create a two-player game. This one corresponds with the circuit diagram that we provided, but feel free to design your own game. Show off those Arduino skills. The USB port is what you'll use to download your code onto the board. The power jack next to the USB port is what you use to power your pachinko machine when the Arduino is not connected to a computer. To add power to the breadboard, connect one wire from the five volt pin on the Arduino to one of the horizontal rows of pins on the edge of the board. All red wires on the diagram represent connections to power. To ground your circuit, connect a wire from the ground pin to the other horizontal row on your breadboard. All black wires represent ground. The Arduino Uno comes with a limited number of digital and analog pins, meaning you can only add a certain amount of components to your project. We used most of the digital pins and one analog pin. The LCD screen has two rows that each hold up to 16 letters. This is what we will use to display the scores. The green wires connect the LCD pins to the Arduino's digital pins. The potentiometer controls the screen's contrast. Next, we have the IR sensors, which are represented by the five black squares and five LEDs in the diagram. These sensors work by having one side, called the emitter, shine a light to the other side, called the collector. If anything blocks the light, like a pachinko ball for example, the collector will let the Arduino know. We will use a piezo and an LED to signify whenever points are scored, or if someone has won the game. The last component is the push button, which we will use to start a new game. It's connected directly to the reset pin on the Arduino. Once you wire everything up, it's time to play your game. Phew, now that was an epic Maker Camp project. We can't wait to see what you're making out there, so remember to post pictures and videos of what you're making and tell us how you made it and why you made it. See you next time.